Good morning, I'm Dr. Rutledge and uh, received an email today from a French surgeon who participated in our uh, consensus conference last year and uh, so I was going to give him a couple of answers to his questions and thought this might be valuable for others. Also, um, if I talk into the video camera, I don't have to type out a long email to do the answer. So he has uh, three questions. He says, uh, which type of revision do you propose in a case of an intractable ulcer? And if you look online, I've got several talks about this. One of the most common long-term complications that's serious in the Ruin Y gastric bypass and the mini gastric bypass is the development of a marginal ulcer. A marginal ulcer occurs in the presence or absence of bile, so it's not related to bile reflux. Um, but a gastrojejunostomy of any type has been shown not just in bariatric surgery, but in general surgery for the past 100 years, that a gastrojejunostomy can relate, can result, sorry, in a marginal ulcer in up to 5% of patients. In particular, it's usually induced by an association with either a dietary indiscretion and things that we think about there are coffee, alcohol, things like that. Medications like NSAIDs, aspirin, ibuprofen, drugs like that. Um, but maybe the most common etiologic factor of marginal ulcer appears to be smoking. And so for any patient who presents with a marginal ulcer, a careful review of those things are what we recommend. Um, <clears throat> in addition, what we have found is, and there is some good research to support this, is probiotics, particularly in the form of yogurt, may be helpful in avoiding uh, a reinfection with H. pylori or actual preventing of the uh, acid burning marginal ulcer that occurs in Roux and Y gastric bypass and MGB. Again, one of the big advantages of MGB is in the unfortunate case where these other conservative medical treatments don't work, and in my experience, the medical therapies usually work if they're aggressively followed by someone who's knowledgeable about these risk factors in about 95% of patients. So only 5% of the 5% in my experience come to revision. And what we recommend is just take down of the gastrojejunostomy, that is divide the gastroj with a staple gun, and that leaves then two gastric pouches, the proximal and distal, and we recommend they be reconnected, reanastomosed, by doing a gastrotomy on the tip of the gastric pouch and on the uh, exact opposite side on the um, uh, bypass stomach, and then doing a 60 stapler between them, and then closing that defect, usually hand-sewn. That, in my experience, takes between 20 and 30 minutes, and by removing the gastrojejunostomy, you essentially treat the uh, marginal ulcer. So what we recommend is that uh, marginal ulcer should be uh, high in the mind of any bypass patient or anybody who has a gastrojejunostomy for any reason. Um, there are good preventative measures, um, an excellent diet, avoiding NSAIDs, particularly avoiding smoking, the use of PPIs and anti-H pylori therapy, support with a good diet, including yogurt and probiotics. In those cases where they fail, what we recommend is taking down the gastrojejunostomy. That leaves the patient with the equivalent of a sleeve type reconstruction. It's not as powerful as the MGB, but that's our recommendation for the management of marginal ulcer. And there's more detail, full slide presentations online. Please view these detailed presentations on either YouTube to see the surgery um, or on slideshare.net where we have slide presentations on these topics. The next question is what do you do in the, pre in the case of excess weight loss? Again, this is not commonly a problem with sleeve or band because they're not very powerful operations. The MGB though, like the biliopancreatic diversion and other types of operations, is designed to get a therapeutic result and it's a very powerful therapy. In other words, our experience, uh, and this is corroborated by a lot of other publications, is that the MGB is extremely powerful. That is, it's in my experience and reported by others, much more effective than the other types of weight loss surgery. And given this increased power, there's the potential that the therapeutic goal that is causing major weight loss could be overshot in some patients. And again, the real attractive feature of the mini gastric bypass, to my way of thinking, is it's almost trivially easy to revise. 
Um, so again, let's think about this again. If you had a therapy, say an aspirin tablet or chemotherapy or antibiotics, you have a therapeutic effect. And that therapeutic effect could be relief of pain in an aspirin tablet, relief of an infection with an antibiotic, or cure of cancer in a chemotherapeutic agent. In all of these therapeutic interventions, there's also the potential for a side effect. There's a potential that the therapeutic effect may be too powerful or it could be too weak. It turns out the vast majority of bariatric surgical procedures are generally too weak and they fail, and they rarely are too powerful. The MGB, in contrast, has the potential to be extremely powerful and in a small percentage, in my series about 1% of patients, it can be so powerful that you can get excess weight loss. And again, this is simple to understand. The design of the mini gastric bypass is simple and straightforward. You have a smaller gastric pouch and you have a shorter gut. You have decreased absorption of fat, decreased absorption of protein, decreased tolerance of sugary uh, foods, so there's a significant decrease in caloric intake. And what's a problem with any kind of operation is it's hard to precisely calibrate this therapeutic effect. That is to say, when the surgeon is operating, how can we possi possibly know the precise amount of therapeutic effect that will be obtained in each individual patient? And in fact, we cannot. We know in general it's relatively safe to bypass around 200 centimeters or about six feet, but we know in some patients that therapeutic uh, intervention is too little and some it's too much. And that's the question here, number two, that our surgeon from France was asking. And the answer to that is simple. We never want to have the therapeutic effect to be too strong, but again, the beauty, the attraction to me of the MGB is its exit strategy. It's almost trivially easy to undo the mini gastric bypass. Again, laparoscopic ports are placed. This is a five to 10 minute procedure. The gastrojejunostomy is identified and divided with a staple gun. Again, in our experience, the scar tissue there is very minor uh, when you use the so-called Rutledge technique and not the technique of Caballero and Carbajo. The gastrojejunostomy is divided. After dividing the gastrojejunostomy, the bowel goes back to its normal position, and then the proximal and gastric pouches are then re-anastomosed. This creates a, a, a normal kind of anatomy, much like a sleeve, and so it gives the patient a significant return of GI function, an improved digestion and absorption of fat and calories. And this operation in my hands is a 20 to 30 minute procedure. The patient's usually in the hospital for uh, a day, and uh, if you think about it, it's less operating time than it takes to get a haircut, it's less operating time than it takes to have your teeth cleaned, and we don't ever want to do this, but we certainly recognize that given the power, the therapeutic power of the MGB, and it's like all surgeries, it's lack of precision, it will be necessary in some cases. We have videos of this online, I have other discussions in more detail on this topic, but to summarize, some patients will get excess weight loss after the MGB because of its extreme power in compared to operations like the sleeve and the band, which are significantly less powerful in my experience. And the therapy is to identify this with the patient, discuss it with the patient, and move in a quick fashion to go forward and divide the gastrojejunostomy of the MGB and recreate the normal gut anatomy with a gastrogastrostomy. We have seen some tragedies where patients don't return to their MGB surgeon. They go instead to another surgeon and what we have found is that it can lead to death if a patient with excess weight loss is converted to Roux and Y. If you have excess weight loss, you don't need a bypass type procedure. Now the Roux and Y is um, maybe a better choice because it's so weak as far as its effectiveness, but still it can cause significant weight loss as we know. And so choosing a weight loss operation as a way to salvage a patient who has excess weight loss is clearly a misunderstanding and a confusion and error in my opinion by the operating surgeon. Excess weight loss is dealt with by dividing the gastro-J and recreating the normal gut anatomy. Now, if there is a case where the amount of excess weight loss is mild, um, then again, uh, in a less serious situation, one can 
consider tailoring the length of the bypass. Um, we only do that in cases where the patient's health is superb and where it's more a cosmetic adjustment. In general, when the excess weight loss is severe, dangerous, associated with symptoms of malnutrition, then we think that there shouldn't be any uh, confusion. What we should do is take down the gastro J. In some cases, though, there's a mild excess weight loss. There's a concern that the patient might be, quote, a little too thin. In those cases, a consideration can be obtained to simply shorten the bypass. In that case, you divide the gastro J and shorten the length of the bypass, usually by half. Um, but we do that only in cases where the patient is truly in excellent surgical health. All right, let's see. His third question is, when excess weight loss, hypoalbuminemia comes, do you propose a complete reversion or just make a shorter limb? And that is the third question goes back to what we just talked about. When it's serious, always take down. Don't revise back to a shorter limb. And so we've talked about that. So those are three questions from a surgeon uh, who was very complimentary enjoying his MGB. And I hope that these uh, questions uh, are answered adequately. If not, please feel free to email me if you have these or other questions. Thanks very much.